Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. I wanted to help shed light on sensitive skin, traditional moisturizers, hydrators or non-traditional moisturizers and how they all tie in together. So first I'll talk about what traditional moisturizers are and why they're bad for your skin. Then we'll go into the hydrators and how people get sensitive skin. If that interests you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends to help my channel grow. I would love it if you did that. If you want to buy skincare, you can shop my links. I'll put them down below. And if you're wondering why my hair looks a little strange today, it's because I just washed it and I thought I would put just a little bit of oil in it and it turns out that little bit was way too much and so now i have freshly washed greasy hair very clean up here <laughs> and very argon oil down here so i am trying to uh, bring my hair back to health and i thought i was doing a good thing right before filming videos turns out wasn't such a good idea anyway Conventional moisturizers mimic the properties of natural skin. So they include water, lipids, and proteins, which is really the composition of the skin. And when applied to the skin, they confuse the skin because the skin recognizes, oh, this is, you know, the right proportion to what we have. And it dysregulates the communication between the cells because they're getting a false signal. We're hydrated, we're plump, we've got the lipids, we've got the proteins, all's good, you don't need to do anything. And then that gets communicated down through the chain of command to the cells deep in the skin. And they say, all's good, we don't need to produce hydration. And they're dysregulated, they stop producing the necessary proteins and lipids and hydration, glycosaminoglycans, hyaluronic acid, because it's being applied topically and they think they don't need to produce it. But the problem with that is those surface uh, emollients and, high, and oils and proteins can't absorb deep into the skin. And so the skin on the surface is communicating to the deeper layers that it's fine, it doesn't need to do anything. Meanwhile, these proteins and these lipids aren't actually absorbing deep into the skin. That's how the skin barrier gets broken and that's how people develop sensitive skin. Usually there's even more oils and emollients in a night cream and a little bit less in a day cream. And these are the kinds of creams that you will find throughout Sephora, throughout Ulta, throughout Macy's, throughout Saks, Neiman Marcus. Those are all the sort of department store, just the common moisturizers. That's how they're made. And what happens when you use a moisturizer is you apply it to the surface of the skin. It dysregulates cell communication basically by making the skin think it's producing hydration. In addition to that, the normal cell cycle goes from a skin being born, coming up through the epidermis until it gets to the very top layer called the stratum corneum, where it's just dead skin that just protects us. And eventually when it gets to the very, very surface of the stratum corneum, it exfoliates and falls off. When creams are applied on the skin with these emollients and lipids and oils, what happens is the skin start to stick to get the cells start to stick together in that stratum corneum and exfoliation decreases. Now it's bad enough that our skin really slows down in its exfoliation from childhood to adulthood and later years. This slows down exfoliation even more. So children exfoliate at a rate of about four weeks. More mature skin can have a skin cycle that's up to eight weeks. And what we try to do is speed up the skin cycle in anti-aging treatments to return it more toward a childlike healthy state where the skin is going through its cycle in a faster way as it did when we were young. So when there's oil sitting on the skin, it prevents those skins from being able to unglue and unstick off and fall off. So as an individual continues to use typical creams, the skin starts to get more and more dry. 
because it turns off its hydration production and it also starts to have a weakened barrier. This can lead to sensitivity. It actually leads to premature aging as well. So in a nutshell, conventional hydrators give you a sense of artificial hydration, a plumping effect, a smoothing effect, the skin has a glow, but it's all artificial and very short-lived. The second you wash your skin and that moisturizer's gone, the skin's actually dysregulated and confused. And that's why conventional moisturizers are not good for skin. So what do non-conventional moisturizers or hydrators do that's so different from conventional moisturizers? They don't try to substitute the hydration produced by the skin. They provide ingredients to help strengthen and protect the skin barrier with ingredients like ceramides. They stimulate the fibroblasts to produce collagen, to produce glycosaminoglycans like hyaluronic acid to keep that moisture being synthesized and produced deep in the skin and percolate through all the skin layers. They stimulate the repair and maintenance of a healthy skin barrier so that moisture doesn't come out and evaporate and that the skin isn't as sensitive to irritants applied on top of it because it's got a strong barrier. These hydrators provide antioxidant protection. They provide DNA repair. They provide calming properties to help reduce redness in the skin. They enhance epidermal renewal. So basically it's like having the skin being a factory and the hydrators just bringing in the ingredients so that the factory can produce on its own what needs to be made, whether they're hyaluronic acid, uh, ceramides, barrier support, DNA repair, the skin will do all of that on its own when these hydrators provide the key ingredients that are necessary to repair, the skin will repair itself as long as it's given what it needs to be able to do that. So it wakes up the skin. It actually does the opposite to moisturizers because it wakes up the skin. It makes the skin work. It makes it make all these different things that the skin does not make when a conventional moisturizer is on applied on top of the skin and the opposite happens. The skin gets lazy and does nothing. And just to wrap it up, I want to make a quick comment about oils. What will happen when oil is applied to the skin? And it's the same thing. If you can imagine dry, flaky skin kind of peeling off, if you apply an oil, that skin is going to kind of stick down to the skin rather than peeling off. So oils do the same thing as these conventional moisturizers. They cause the skin to be confused. They stop the natural pattern of exfoliation. They don't do anything to communicate to the fibroblast to say, hey, make more collagen. Hey, make more hydration. Get going, get off your lazy butt and start producing things so the skin can be healthy and bouncy and hydrated. The, basically what oil does is stops all those signals and says, chill, relax, don't do anything. We've got you covered. We're just going to be this thick layer on top. You can dysregulate down below and we'll just make you dependent on us as we sit on your skin. Now, all that is true for 99% of the population. 1% of the population has authentically, genuinely dry skin. They just don't produce oil. Those individuals are an exception to this rule. Truly dry skin needs to be addressed a little differently, but most people with dry skin actually have dehydrated skin because their barriers compromised. They can't hold on to water and because the skin is lazy and it's not producing its own hydration. Another subset of people is confused why they're dry and oily at the same time. And it's the same reason. They're not actually dry. They're dehydrated because the, the skin is not producing hydration. Oil does not produce hydration. Oil is not water. Water is hydration. So you drink water, you don't drink oil when you're thirsty and you're dehydrated. It's the same with skin. 
So they're dehydrated, but they're still producing oil. It's because the skin is dysregulated. It's confused. It's trying to figure out what is happening. And this is why I never recommend oils. But as I said, if you're dehydrated and oily, or if you're dry and oily, but you're actually dehydrated, or you feel you're dehydrated, your skin is dysregulated. If you're genuinely dry, you produce no oil, you have no pores then that's a different story and you need more oil support because your body is not producing it. But for 99% of the population, oil is a big no. Even though it feels good, it smells good, it goes on so nicely, it doesn't do your skin any good. I hope this video helped, I hope it made sense and I would love to hear from you what type of skin you have and if you've ever experienced this journey of dehydrated or oily skin until you discovered true hydrators where your skin comes back to health. So let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.